Hi everyone, we're happy you could return. Everything you need to know about AMC stock in this movie will be covered. The question that most people, though, I believe is actually about when the AMC stock will start to move more favorably. On a specific date, you must be mindful. I'll offer you my estimates in that date. You should also consider the state of the economy. This is crucial since the state of the economy might mean that every down let us first take a brief glance at the markets of today. Shares of AMC, it's evident that names impacted by interest rates are currently suffering. These days, big tech is doing quite well. NVIDIA is up 3%, ARM even is up, and many other large tech firms are performing nicely. As a result, the Russell is down nearly 1% while the NASDAQ is up 0.35 points. The Fed's increase in interest rates has already informed you of this. There is a price reduction for fewer rates. There will be six cuts in 2025 and 2026 with a higher longer-term rate and steady rate. I'm not convinced that the Fed won't be making significant rate cuts in 2025. Powell spoke at the conference in a way that seemed very non-alarmed, if that's the right word. It almost sounded like he was waiting for something to happen, like he believed the economy was about to experience a sudden weakness. He repeatedly stated this could happen and that the Fed might be forced to cut rates sooner rather than later. When you talk to people, you hear that people aren't doing all that well, for example. Lululemon reports that customers are sharply withdrawing starting in 2024. Customers at McDonald's are cutting back on their purchases, as evidenced by the company after company that we're seeing. However, the retail sales and durable goods data that we've received so far don't quite match up with the situation. It almost sounded like Powell knew something that we don't, and if anyone would know something, it would be Powell well, Powell's young son, anyway, so that's kind of the vibe that I got from Powell during the meeting. Now, what does that mean? Well, a full-blown recession not okay the Fed is going to flip-flop and start cutting rates as soon as they get the first sign of weakness it looks like Powell wants. Um, you know, any reason to really start cutting rates at this point, like any reason at all, you give Powell a reason to start cutting rates. He is going to go cut crazy on the markets, and that's going to be great for interest rate-sensitive names as long as the pain in the economy is not a deep right as long. As it's not like some kind of bad recession event coming, then uh, that, that would be a problem. And let's be honest, it's, that's not really something that is on my radar. If, if, if we did get a slowdown, I don't think it's going to be that deep. I'm um, definitely not like great financial crisis or anything. Along those lines, so um, that begs a question, when do interest rate sensitive stocks start to do better well? I think you can directly look at when we're going to get the F, the first Fed rate cut, and determine around this time you could start to see AMC performing a lot better now in the next Fed. Meaning there's a 1-4.4% chance of a cut. Depending on how April's data turns out and how the remainder of March plays out, this might shift to pricing in a cut by May. For instance, data on personal spending is released on Friday of next week, and data on durable goods is released on Tuesday of following week. We will thus be receiving a plethora of diverse data points regarding the economy and customers, all of which I believe will be crucial in determining whether or not we ultimately receive a cut. POW is merely looking for an excuse to lower rates. Since it's election year, let's face it, he is beginning to sense a great deal of political pressure on the high rates. It can have a significant impact on Powell, since a lot of senators and other government officials are essentially pushing him to start lowering rates. If Powell is proven to be incorrect about the rise in inflation, it would suggest that the entire transitory argument was false. The Federal Reserve would most likely prefer more inflation as long as people continue to have jobs and it doesn't explode. Powell would argue that, given the option, they would choose greater inflation than a recession since starting one would be extremely unpleasant from a political standpoint. If the economic data worsens by June, I believe we could potentially see a cut by May. There is a 65.7% likelihood of a cut on June 12th, the first day of summer. That's when the first rate cut ought to occur. How do you feel? When you receive the initial cut, do equities that are impacted by interest rates really start to perform better? If that weren't the case, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think small cap stocks do better following the June decrease. When do stocks that are like AMC jump off the charts? When will other stocks simply keep rising? If not though, that can take a little longer. However, I continue to believe that's when AMC will begin to improve. At that point, AMC ought to start performing better. I would also like to share with you this AMC tale that I came upon. It's titled AMC Stock Why Q1 May Be Better Than Expected, and if you see AMC, it's usually a sign of improved performance or positive news. The consensus on Wall Street is that AMC's first quarter 2024 sales will have decreased by 12%. But for the following reasons, that might not be the case the box office success of recent films like As Doom Part 2 and Kung Fu Panda 4 suggests that revenue may surprise everyone. 
CEO Adam Aaron is concerned about the potential impact of the writer's strike on sales, which might push AMC's projection closer to the upper end of its range. Aaron claims that following a difficult recovery from corruption, AMC has been gradually strengthening its shaky underpinnings. However, the price of AMC stock has dropped significantly thus far in 2024. This is a result of concerns over stock dilution and the potential financial impact of the Hollywood writer's strike from the previous year. The impact of the strike on income is anticipated to be significant. There is a significant correlation between the performance of AMC shares and the local box office. The first quarter of 2024 doesn't appear to be going as well as it did in 2023. January through March of that year saw $1,722 billion in box office receipts for 187 films. Avatar The Way of Water was this year's biggest hit, accounting for almost 16% of the overall box office receipts. With 175 titles, the Key One box office had generated $1,305 billion as of March 21st. By the end of the month, this figure might increase, but the quarter doesn't seem to be as robust as it was at this time last year. Even so, there have been a few pleasant surprises particularly with the increased number of reissues. The first major smash was Kung Fu Panda 4, which debuted on March 8th and made an estimated $30 million over its two weeks at the top of the box office. The movie has made $112, $85 billion in total so far, and by the end of the month, it should have made even more. The success of Dune Part 2 at the box office was the second pleasant surprise. Legendary Entertainment claims that since its March 1st release, the film has been the biggest of the first quarter. An impressive $4,947,000,000 has been made by the sci-fi epic at the worldwide box office. To surpass the outcomes of Q1 2023, however, this last surge in domestic box office growth might not be sufficient for Q1 2024. The movie industry will be in considerably better shape when Q2 gets underway than it was in Q1. He then discusses why Q1 could have gone more smoothly than anticipated. According to the report, AMC CEO Adam Aaron has been warning business owners for some time that the Hollywood writer's strike would cause a delay in the distribution of films over the past two quarters. Thus, expectations that AMC's revenue would return to its pre-pandemic level have been suspended. The company's share price has decreased by almost 30% this year as a result of analysts' reduced projections for the following three months. This is accurate despite the likelihood that sales in Q1224 will be lower than in Q1 2023. I believe AMC will post box office figures that are more in line with the upper end of its range, approximately 93.4 million, rather than the lower end, approximately 7,456 million, given the increase in March's statistics. More significantly, should AMC surpass expectations analysts are presently projecting a 6% decline in revenue year over year, which may lessen the immediate pressure on management to raise money by deceiving shareholders. I believe that the primary factor undermining AMC's share price in recent months is this. Thus, less diluting could result if AMC beats on profits, but I don't believe Adam Aaron and AMC are deceiving investors. I don't think that's the situation we're in here. I think they're misleading shareholders because they know they have a massive debt wall that will come due in 2026 and they need to raise capital to fund that otherwise, they will go bankrupt. That's the simple truth. If we get more rate cuts, though, that will be especially beneficial for AMC to help them kind of avert that coming crisis coming in 2026, but you know that's up in the air, and when you do start to get some rate cuts, that will probably start to very positively affect AMC stocks. I thought that was an interesting article that I would briefly share with you guys and kind of uh, give my opinion there again. Sure enough, AMC beats the numbers great personally. Uh, I believe that you currently have a 14.25% short interest percentage of free flow. The 2.6 million shares that have been sold are covered by the $157 million in short positions that are already in place. 53.66 million short shares are available for lending, with a 69.3% utilization rate and a 1.12% cost of borrowing. 69.8 out of 100 is the short score. The data is starting to improve a little bit now that you have approximately 5% in cost borrow costs. Recently, short interest has increased dramatically. Does that imply that more people are interested in purchasing AMC stock? What is meant by that? It might not be a bad thing, but I'm not sure. Now let's see how the options operate. Four transactions would bring in $68.95,000, a 26% increase in order value. Although things aren't all that intriguing right now, they could be worse. It's not surprising that things aren't as pleased with stock tweets as they were yesterday. AMC's price has decreased by 2.38%. It is currently at 51, down from yesterday's moderate level of 54. 
There are 59 messages today, which is still a lot but fewer than there were yesterday. The 54% participation rate is normal but yet not very high. While hardly wow, that's impressive, it's also not terrible since my previous video, not much has changed about this stock watch information. About 3,600 calls will still be paid for the next week. Next week, 43,000 will be calling in the money. Approximately 20,000 puts are out of the money, whereas only 4,300 are. Real AMC bulls, in my opinion, are simply waiting for one of two things to occur, either the stock will continue to decline from this point on. The current pricing, which is about $4 per share, is crucial in my opinion. If you obtain less than $4 per share, things go really terrible. At the moment, an AMC share costs $410. If AMC can break over that 50-day moving average at $436 per share, things will get a whole lot better. It's feasible that the difference may increase to roughly $5.80, which would also be fantastic. Please share your thoughts with me. Down you can comment below, keeping in mind that the AMC RSI is still weak at 39.7. Hi there, I appreciate you seeing. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the upcoming movie, and have a great rest of the day and weekend.